Hello everyone, today we will be learning about React hooks. So we've got a very simple hook here called the state hook, which is one of the defaults. You can import it from React and give it an initial value. And then you can use the two variables it gives you with one being the persistent value of your state, in this case, the count, and also a set count method, which you can use to set your count to whatever you'd like. Uh, we will be doing something a little bit more complicated we'll actually be creating our own hook that we can use in multiple different components. So let's get started. Here I've got a very simple application. Uh, as you can see in the, uh, on the right hand side, we can see a preview with uh, basically an input search box and an, a list of articles and it says search for articles. So the article search component actually has all of the logic at the moment. Um, so we've got a couple of use state variables and we've also got some another one use effect. Basically the UI is an input box with a list of articles as you can see. So anytime the query changes, meaning the input box changes, we call this handle query change which will set the query. And in turn this use effect will run calling this API, right? So we've got an API from algolia.com, which we'll see in a bit, which will then update the data, which then uh, previews the list here on, on the right. So the API is very simple. Uh, we've got a search API, which we're using with a query. And all it does is return us articles with this array called hits. And we are just displaying the URL and the title in, in our little component here. So our, our problem now to solve is what if we need to use this API, for example, the search API or maybe the user's API in different components. So we wouldn't want to write the same code every single time. So we can just create a hook out of this uh, API call and just use the hook every everywhere, basically. So let's go ahead and do that. Our hooks folder here currently is, is empty. So let's make a new file called we'll call it use data and name it ts use data.ts for TypeScript. And a, a hook basically, if you want to create a new hook, it's going to just be a function called use data. And it's a convention maybe to call it use data or anything use, basically use something. So if you're using, let's say, the window object of your DOM, you can call it use DOM or in my case, it'll be use data. So we'll just export that function as a default variable. And as you can see, we've got a few things already done here, right? So we've got a query and we've got the data. Now both of these could live in the hook. So we're gonna go ahead and, and copy this uh, and basically put it in the hook because that's where we want the, the data to be. Now it's complaining that we need to import React. So we've got use state and use effect. Now we just need to return something, right? So the hooks usually return an array. So in this case, we need to return query and probably set query and the da actual data. So we'll put the data in the beginning. So we've got the data, we've got the query and the set query. So the client or the user of this hook should have everything needed to start using it. Um, so here we don't need any of this anymore since we abstracted that part out. So we'll just, uh, th this, this is basically returning an array of all these variables, right? So we'll deconstruct that array just as we do with the use state hook and get it from our use data hook. Now our use data doesn't actually take in any values um, as a as a prop as a parameter, so we don't need to really do that. And we just need to go ahead and import our use data hook here. And since we're in this folder here called components, we need to go one level up, then go into our hooks folder and import it from use data.
Okay, great. Um, so one update that we should probably make is add an as const here. So what this will do is freeze all of these values and their types since we're using TypeScript. So this one will be a, an array. Uh, this one will be a string and this one will be a set state action, right? So dispatch set state action. So that's one thing you should add to your hook always. Um, okay, so let's read through this a little bit and so that we understand. First thing we do is create a state for storing our query and then create a state for storing our data. So those two things we need to persist. Um, next will be a use effect action when the query changes. So we're watching the query object and then when that changes, this React will trigger this API or the tr trigger this function which calls an API. Inside of that, we have an async function called fetch data, which we're actually calling immediately. Um, the reason we have to do this is because use effect cannot take async functions. And if you need to use something like async await, then you have to create a new function within your use effect and call it immediately with all the, all the uh, details. So here we create we actually use, are using Axios to make a get request to algolia.com, which is the search API here. So the query actually comes in from our state, which you know the, the hook can set. And if we go ahead and test our application, everything still works perfectly. And the list updates as soon as we call, start calling it. Um, but we should probably do some more improvements. Um, what we really need is probably a, a loading state, right? So we need to check whether the API call is loading. And if, if we actually go ahead and open the dev tools here, go to the network tab, react. So as you can see, we're making multiple search calls, one, two, three, basically one per character. Um, so we shouldn't really be doing that. There's multiple ways you can solve this, but one way is to um, call, uh, is to actually cancel the call. So we, we can use something called cancel token. So there's three, three main improvements that we can make. So we can create a loading state for our Boolean value for, for loading, whether the API is loading or not loading. So a simple use state call with the boolean um, type and the default value will be false because we, we when we load uh, we are not actually loading anything right uh, the next thing will be a similar for similar state but it'll be for our error state so this but the only difference will be we'll create a string instead of a, a boolean because we want to store the state or sorry the error so that'll be a string and we'll call it error and set error. And the last thing will be a cancel token. And for now, we'll keep this as undefined because um, we, we don't really have a token yet. Uh, so, all right, so let's get started with the loading. Uh, so we'll basically, anytime we call this API, right, we should set the loading as true. So let's do that because we next next line what we do is call the API. So obviously we are loading. So let's do set loading true here right before and then probably after we're done setting the data, we should set the loading to false. Similarly, we, we can also set the error to false when we start loading because when we have a brand new API call, we we are not exactly having any error until the API actually finishes. So we can set this to empty string because that's our default state. Um, so when do we actually set the error? Here, we, we don't have any try, catch, or anything. Uh, well, if you notice, we have an async function which we're calling immediately. So instead of having this, this as, an, as a hanging function, we can actually add a catch block here, right? So this will be an error, probably an Axios error type. Um, so we can use this as our error case. So anytime this API fails, or anytime this function causes an error, we'll get this error here. We'll forget about typing that for now. 
Um, you should always, by the way, have your functions as typed. And I'll in, in my complete code, I will have that that typed. If you click on the description below. All right, so the error actually will be error dot response dot data. Or, or you can also use the generic error dot message, which we'll do for now. So this will be a string, so we can add the type here. Uh, the next thing we can do is obviously set the error to the message. So anytime we, we have an error in the API call, it'll be set in this error state. All right, so now the only part left is the cancel token. All right, so the cancel token, we actually forgot to set the type here, which will be a cancel token. So this IDE gives you an option. Okay, it'll still be undefined in the beginning, but what one thing we need to do is before we set it to loading, um, we need to get a new cancel token and set it to the state. Um, so let's do that. Actually, let's do it right before we call the API. So we'll, we'll get a token um, from Axios. So Axios actually has a static value for a cancel token. And we need to actually, once we get this cancel token static value, we can call the source method. Um, so that's a method you call. And then it gives you a cancel token static. So for example, if we hover over this, it returns a cancel token source. Okay, so I was wrong. Let's go ahead and update this uh, type here for your cancel token. Um, and let's actually store it, right? So we can have it in our state. So set token to the token. Um, and how do we actually cancel, cancel the API, right? So first thing we need to do is pass it as, as an option. So there's an option in Axios called cancel token. And we'll use token dot token. So that was probably bad naming choice there. Um, so we passed in the token into our API call. Okay, so when do we actually cancel this API? Well, when we know the token exists and we are actually about to call another API, meaning the token has been there from the previous API, that's when we can cancel it. So probably when the use effect runs, we can do a check for token. If So if the token exists, meaning that there was a previous API call since we set the token right before, we can actually call the cancel method in the token. So if the token exists, then cancel it, then we act, we get a new token source and we set, set that to the value or to the state. Now we, can, we should actually also clear the token, right? So when you uh, are done with the API, you can do a set token of undefined, which is the, the default here. And we should probably also uh, set it to undefined here. Uh, and one thing to note is in this cancel, uh, this will actually throw an error so that this this await call will actually fail if you cancel it. So we should also catch that. Uh, and we can add a custom message here, request cancel. So this will throw a message, error message called whatever you name it here, called, you know, for in our case, it'll be request canceled. So in our catch block, we'll get request canceled. So we should check if uh, error.message is not equal to, you know, request canceled. Then we should do what is uh, needed, basically is the uh, set error and set token to undefined. Or actually, we should probably set token to undefined either way, right? But we just should not set it to the error message. So let's see that in action. Now let's open the, the network tab again. And what I'll do is just type in react hooks. So as you can see, all these red API calls were canceled. So what, what this means is we are not calling the backend server unnecessarily, only when we need to call the, you know, when, when the user is actually finished typing. Um, one other way to uh, solve this problem is if you can delay calling the API. So, you know, you, people do not have infinite typing speed. 
So if somebody's typing, you know, 60 or 70 words per minute, you can delay calling the API for about 200 milliseconds. And after they are finished typing, you can make a final call, um, which we'll, we can learn about that in one of the next videos. All right. So, so far we've done loading, we've done error state, and we're also canceling the, the, the API. But as you can see, we're not actually using these at all. So what we should do is expose those values, loading and error. So what can happen is the whoever is consuming the hook, in our case, the article search component, can make use of that. So we have loading and error. So what we can do here is add two new statements, uh, one for error. So if, if the error exists and it's true, basically if the error has a string, then we display the error in a div. If the loading exists, then we just display a loading message here. And then we have the unordered list here. So let's try that out. So as you can see, the, the loading message did appear, um, but it was pretty fast because the API returns very quickly. But what I did notice is this list, you know, when you're typing, it, it shows you the old list as well. Um, so we should probably fix that. Um, so what we can do is go into our hook and right before we call the API, we can set the, just like we clear the error, we can clear the data. Um, so that's something we forgot to do. So if we just set it to the empty array and then as you can see, the list disappears and then we have the loading message. One last improvement that you can do to your API um, is this is not a very good convention to add query parameters inside of your uh, URL here. So the URL is really ends at search, right? So what we can do is remove this um, and then add, in, just like the cancel token, we should add some parameters. So the params will be an object and the, uh, the query will be the query that we actually receive. So that should work just as well. Great. Um, now what we should actually do if you want to make this more reusable is actually take in the params, right? So instead of taking in the query, we should take in the params. So maybe that's something that you can improve. And the other improvement that you can make here is instead of just hard coding the URL here, you can actually take in the URL um, as a parameter. So I'll put the URL here. Uh, the URL variable, um, which will actually come in from our uh, use data hook. So if we take in a string for, for URL, what we can do is when we, so the use data hook takes in, in a string, which we pass in here, and now everything works perfectly fine. So we can now use this hook with any URL we like. Um, and then the parameters can also be more generic where we take in the parameters instead of the query. So post that in the comments how you can how you go about doing that and post your solution if you have any and we'll take a look. And that is all the improvements that we can make or if you can think of anything else, please post in the comments. Um, I'll be making more videos in the future on React, front end, programming, anything. Um, or if you have any suggestions, please leave them down below and we'll see you in the next video.